I think he had too much preparation. Maybe. The thing that these guys do is they make a lot of claims about if Donald Trump becomes president, all of these terrible consequences are going to ensue. Right, right. But in reality, Donald Trump was president. Mm -hmm. Inflation was low. Take home pay was higher. Tim seemed a bit off during that exchange, trying to stay on track. But J.D. Vance really stood out with some sharp responses. I didn't expect it, but J.D. Vance definitely had the upper hand in this moment. Tim Walls was struggling to keep up. He didn't seem prepared. Tough job here, because you've got to play whack-a-mole. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver rising take-home pay, which of course he did. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver lower inflation, wow. which of course he did. And then you simultaneously got to defend Kamala Harris's atrocious economic record, which has made gas, groceries, and housing unaffordable <laughs> for American citizens. I was raised by a woman who would sometimes go into medical debt so that she could put food on the table in our household. I know damn, what it's damn. like to not be able to afford the things that you need to afford. You have to wonder what Tim was writing down during that time, just taking notes or maybe doodling? It reminds me of that meme with Kamala on the plane and people joke about what she's drawing. I can't show it here, of course, but if you haven't seen it, it's worth a look. Ford, we can do so much better. To all of you watching, we can get back to an America that's affordable again. We just got to get back to common sense economic principles. I hope. said, I'll give you two minutes. Well, first of all, you're going to hear a lot from Tim Walz this evening, and you just right. heard it in the answer. A lot of what Kamala Harris proposes to do, and some of it, I'll be honest with you, it even sounds pretty good. Here's <laughs> what you won't hear, is that Kamala Harris has already done it because she's been the vice president for three and a half years. She had the opportunity to enact all of these great policies, and what she's actually Damn. done instead is drive the cost of food higher by 25%, drive the cost of housing higher by about 60%, open the American southern border and make middle class life unaffordable for a large number. I think even Walls is realizing he might have aligned himself with the wrong person. It's like he's in a situation similar to Tim Kaine, but even less effective. Comparing Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton, I have my issues with Hillary, but she was a stronger candidate than Kamala. It seems like Kamala hasn't really brought much to the table. You know what I mean? of Americans. If Kamala Harris has such great plans for how to address middle class problems, then she ought to do them now. Not when asking for a promotion, but yeah. in the job the American people gave her three and a half years ago. And the fact that she... First of all, uh, Tim just said something that I agree with. We don't want to blame immigrants for higher housing prices, but we do want to blame Kamala Harris for letting in <laughs> millions of illegal aliens into this Pass country. Pass the bill. Pass the bill. We should be allowing 35 million a year in instead of just 25 or 20, feel free to fact check me on that. I don't really care if it's even 10 million. I just don't want to be the one paying for it. If you guys actually read the bill, I'll be quiet. Which does drive up cost him. 25 million illegal aliens competing with Americans for scarce homes is one of the most significant drivers yeah. of home prices in the country. It's why we have massive increases in home prices that have happened right alongside massive increases in illegal alien, wow. uh, alien populations under Kamala Harris's leadership. Now, so we've got. J.D. Vance has been doing a great job under the current leadership. It's interesting to think about how this situation was likely designed, rather than being a flaw. You might wonder how people can afford these homes. J.D. might ask, how can they afford it? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Think about who's buying these houses. It's not just individuals. It's the federal government stepping in to purchase rental properties and apartment buildings. Essentially, you're funding it. 25 million illegal aliens who are here in the country. What do we do with them? I think the first thing that we do is we start with the criminal migrants. About a million of a million, those people shit. have committed some form of crime in About addition 10. to crossing the border illegally. I think you start with deportations on those folks. He needs to check his facts. There are way more than a million. All he has to do is look at the imprisonment statistics by immigration status, but they won't share that information. I think he's just trying to please people. And then I think you make it harder for illegal aliens to undercut the wages of American workers. A lot of people will go home if they can't work for yes. less than minimum wage in our own country. And by the way, that'll be really good for our workers who just want to earn a fair wage for doing a good day's work. And the final point, Margaret, is you ask about family separation. Right now in this country, Margaret, Wait for it. we have 320,000 children that the Department of Homeland Security has effectively lost. Some of them have been sex trafficked. Some of them... Wow. 
hopefully are at homes with their families. Some of them have been used as drug trafficking mules. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. Wow, that was some congressional testimony from the Department of Homeland Security. Social workers were saying, uh, we don't know where these individuals are. And the congressman pointed out, you sent 12 people to the same address. The response was, well, it wasn't family. We just did that. One of the women admitted, I have a guilty conscience about what I did with these children, and it was a real moment of accountability. She said she was going to do this. Real leadership would be saying, you know what? I screwed up. We're going to go back to Donald Trump's border policies. I wish that she would do that. It would be no. good for all of us. Wow. He really got roasted in that tweet storm, didn't he? If you've made it this far, just hang in there with me. I haven't found anyone who thinks Walls did a great job supporting Kamala Harris. As you can see, J.D. Vance is trending right now. Charlie Kirk even mentioned that J.D. Vance won big. There wasn't even a close contest. The facial expressions during that exchange were something else. If you watched it, you know how painful it was to see. J.D. Vance did a great job calling out Tim Walls for his comments against free speech. Tim seemed to imply that there's no guarantee of free speech, and he tried to bring up the old you-can't-yell-fire in a crowded theater argument, which isn't really the issue here. We're talking about when Joe Biden and Harris pressured Facebook, YouTube, and others to crack down on dissenting voices. Looking at what Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire have to say about it, Vance rightly pointed out that Walls and others attacked them for not believing in democracy while also saying there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. We've seen this play out, and it raises questions. J.D. Vance stated that whether you're rich or poor, you should be able to afford a nice meal and live in a safe neighborhood. He's right that many Americans are struggling due to ineffective leadership, even if it sounds like standard talking points. Regarding Tim Walls, it seems he misled people about his record. J.D. Vance pointed out that Walls repealed a Minnesota law protecting babies born after failed abortions. You can read the law for yourself, but it's clear that Walls has been less than honest. Now, just in, all three CNN panelists agree that Tim Walls was thoroughly outmatched by J.D. Vance in this debate. It's definitely worth watching. I mean, I think there was a clear lack of preparation and execution here I on think Walls' he part. I think actually it's the opposite. I think he had too much preparation. Maybe. Yeah. He had so many lines that he was clearly trying to say yeah. that he didn't listen and said when, when uh, J.D. Vance said one of the many, many things he uh, really hit Kamala Harris on, not Tim Walls, but Kamala Harris, he didn't respond because he clearly had things in his mind. Lack of interviews that he has done with national media, with local media, it showed. He needed more reps. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, uh, J.D. Vance is uh, much more uh, experienced. I bet a YouTuber could do a better job than Walls in this debate. Seriously, even an average live streamer or YouTuber would probably express their points more clearly. If you had to describe this debate to someone who couldn't hear it, what would you write? Would you say, J.D. Vance clearly outclassed Tim Walls? Or maybe